back by viewer demand. Today we're taking a look at the Buck Thug and we're going to be talking about this blade in retrospective. You know, uh, I've had this thing for a number of years. Let me break it down what I've done to it, what I like about it, and if it's still a good blade today. Okay guys, before we get into this, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe to see more awesome Alaskan content just like this. Okay, so before we talk about this blade and its merits and its everything, uh, I do want to note that the Buck Thug is no longer made, so this is more for the people who own them or for people who are potentially looking at getting one, even though they are kind of hard to find nowadays, because like I said, Buck had Buck Knives has not made this blade or really any of the Ron Hood blades in quite a few years. So this is not the most attainable blade, but it is a pretty awesome blade if you do find one. And just a uh, kind of spoiler, I would definitely recommend any of the Ron Hood Buck collaboration knives. If you find a hoodlum, if you find a punk, or if you find a thug, I would definitely recommend picking up any of them. They're all pretty awesome. So going back to the thug itself. Now this blade is a pretty big or it's on the larger side of knives. It's not a huge blade, not as large as something like my um, Artac 2, but it is up there in the size. It is also kind of a curve shaped blade, almost more like a kukri kind of style. But this thing was designed by Ron Hood many moons ago, and it was designed to be a just general purpose, survival, kind of wilderness living blade. And to that effect, I think it does a very good job. It is a full flat ground piece of 5160 spring steel, and uh, I have nothing really but the best to say about it. It does a very good job at pretty much everything, I will say, uh, for being a chopping oriented blade, because it is a kind of curved blade you know the the one kind of downside to the thug is the fact that it's a very lightweight blade so this full flat grind really takes a lot of weight from this blade and it was never a particularly thick stocked blade to begin with uh, I think this thing's around 3 16 7 inch thick to begin with so when you full flat grind it especially out towards the tip you really just don't have a whole lot of weight to do chopping with. However, if you use this blade more for batoning, it does just fine. Yeah, that's actually how most of my experience with the Thug has been gained. I baton the heck out of this thing, and hopefully you guys can certainly see that this coating, this powder coating, which is actually pretty darn durable, but it definitely has a lot of wear marks in it. So for being a general purpose survival knife, like I said, uh, baton the heck out of this thing, use the heck out of it. It is one of my go-to kind of all around survival knives. It's really either this or the uh, Chris Reeve Knives Pacific and I feel pretty at home with them. Uh, with this blade, you can choke up on it, get very close to the edge, do a lot of fine tasks with it. And of course, that full flat grind leads to a very fine tip that you can do a lot of good work with. Now, one of the cool things about this being 5160 spring steel, which is also one of my favorite steels, is that because it is ground so thin, a lot of other knives in more traditional steels would be kind of fragile, especially out towards the end. But because this is spring steel, this knife is not very fragile. You do not have to be very careful with it, and you can really beat the hell out of it, and it'll just keep coming back for more. Now, as far as modifications go to this blade, I really haven't done a whole lot. The only two things I've done to this is there was this weird kind of uh, separation point here. So it was designed that if you were using the blade in a traditional sense, you'd hold it like this or you could choke up like this. But if you wanted to chop with it, you would kind of choke back behind this little raised portion and uh, then you could kind of hold it back here and chop. Well, once again, as I mentioned, this knife really isn't great for chopping. So this little piece of uh, metal essentially right here was actually kind of sharp. So all I did was I took a Dremel in about five seconds and just hit that and really rounded it down. I didn't completely take it out of the handle or out of the uh, blade itself. I just rounded it down so that I don't really feel it when I'm, you know, when my thumb or when my, when my when my middle finger or another finger just so happens to be resting on or by it. So I really just uh, took it and rounded it out so that I don't feel it. The other thing I did is this blade does have a skeletonized tank. 
So if you pop off these handle pieces, which are actually very easy to do because it's just a flathead screwdriver, um, I put some paracord and a ferro rod in in that kind of void. So there is a little bit of survival equipment constantly with this knife, and I think uh, it's just kind of a nice feature to have. You know, if you have that kind of dead space in there, you can make it useful by putting a ferro rod and some paracord in there. So those are the only two mods I did to it. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna pop the handle scales off here to show you guys that, but I have shown it in previous videos detailing the buck thug. Uh, as far as it goes though, everything else, the blade is great. It strikes ferro rods amazing. Uh, I still love using this knife. Once again, it doesn't make a lot of uh, air time anymore because I'm trying to do videos on newer knives, you know, give you guys information on blades that, you know, are uh, actually available. You know, this knife is discontinued, so I don't give this one as much air time, but it still does get used quite a bit, and it is just a very fun knife to take out and beat around in the woods. I especially like this one uh, for giving to you know, newer people to survival for them to practice and play around with because once again, you know, this thing is pretty indestructible and I'm not really worried that someone's going to break my, my buck thug as opposed to my CRK Pacific, which is a pretty robust too, but uh, it's just a lot more expensive. So I don't tend to lend that one out or, you know, have people practice with that one. I tend to have them practice with the thug. So overall, pretty solid blade, pretty sweet blade. Um, and this knife is just a real heritage piece because of the Ron Hood affiliation or Hood's Woods affiliation. It's really cool um, and I would highly recommend if you see one pop up on eBay, you know, if you're in the market for something like a Buck Punk or Thug or Hoodlum, they're really great knives to uh, grab and uh, if you grab any of them, you definitely will not regret it. They're definitely high quality blades. I like the sheath pretty well as well. I think it kind of goes under the radar, but it is a pretty useful sheath. You can put a lot on it. So anyways, and that is the Buck Thug. Uh, many years later now, um, still definitely love it. Still definitely a great knife and uh, really no complaints to it. So as always, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you liked taking a look at the Buck Thug. And as always, guys, God bless and I'm out.